You may have noticed these concrete bags down here and thought that's kind of odd. I bought all these and bought all these down here last, the end of last summer basically. And I was hoping that I could get to it before winter hit, but it never worked out. This is the lower crawl space and there's the upper crawl space. This is the one I want to concrete the floor in. But one issue that I overlooked before installing this was this is all like the made of hard pan underneath and I went through and I basically swept off the dirt and got it all, you know, clean and smooth so that I could lay this down. But I didn't notice that there's a slight puddle formed here because there's like a, this high spot here goes side to side and it's just like two or three inches lower here than it is there. So. This whole area actually will fill with water in the winter up to a couple inches, up to where it can like basically cross the top of the dam, <laughs> for lack of a better word, and then go and drain into the footing drain. There's actually a footing drain right underneath there and drain rock and all that. A French drain that goes through the, the wall so that any water that gets through here can make its way out. The concrete guys really should have made this wall higher. So what I need to do is I'm going to cut this tape right here and then I'm going to take advantage of this seam and I'm going to pull this back and I'm just going to dig a little trench right through here and I'm probably going to put in just a four inch pipe that'll be just below the surface. If I was to just dump the slab on here right now, when this puddle wants to form again, it'll create a water pressure to want to get into concrete basically because right now when the water comes in this just floats up and so this just becomes like a, a water bed you just slap it you see the waves <laughs> but uh yeah that was like the first time I, I walked in here during the winter and I just saw like waves ripple out and I thought oh my god <laughs> but no water could come up onto, onto the surface it's like perfectly sealed if I pour it and I accidentally poke a hole and then then we'd have a damp slab all the time because the water would want to force through and then into the slab and yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stop yammering, but because today's gonna be a very long, painful day. Because it's gonna be over 100 bags of concrete or around 100 bags. And I gotta pull this back and dig this out first. I gotta go get the mixer. I gotta set up some kind of ramp here, get stuff out of the way. But I really want to get this junk out of here. What do you want to be when you grow up? A concrete mixer. <laughs> Sounds good. We're almost there. No. You can go down that way. Yep. That's right. Go down that way and around. And then down to the basement. And I also got a nice winter upstairs just now, so I'm gonna go dig this out, have Christy dig this out, eat a snack, and get ready for this brutal one. It's gonna be a big, big slab. <laughs> it's 13 by 15, so 200 square feet. And of course the bags are all old. They're all stiff, so I gotta drop them all. <laughs> So, you ready to mix all this concrete for me? <laughs> We've got a hundred bags. Each bag weighs two of you. So we've just got to mix 200 of you. And look at this stuff, it's basically like rock hard. It's like concrete almost, you know? The vapor barrier is doing a great job of keeping the moisture out of the, the, uh, 
out of this crawl space. You see how moist everything is down there. And if you don't have this, or if you just let it die here, the moisture is just gonna come up around the edges. Beautiful boy. <laughs> Hi. I forgot to show you, but I dug down underneath here, down to the top to the um to the filter fabric that's on top of the drain rock. And I laid the pipe on top of that. So that way the water can just flow straight out through the drain filter fabric down to that drain system and go out. Or it can go out that way too, whichever way it wants to go. But I'm thinking it wants to go that way. Or also, there's actually drains down in the footing through this one, through that footing, and through the far footing all the way out there. So water can go under this slab very easily. Uh, and there's a ton of gravel under there. And uh, this slab is actually, I think almost 18 inches off the hard pan. So it's well protected.
Alrighty. Whew. Looking pretty good. I'm just trying to keep it level. You know, it's not going to be perfect. I need to get my rubber boots and make it a lot easier. I have to fire up the backhoe and bring down some more concrete. I'm making it a little thicker than I had planned on. But uh, I might not throw in any rebar, so. Yeah, I probably won't. And I should um, find some cardboard or wood, plywood, lay it down here so I stop tracking concrete mud in here. Bastard.
That's good. That's better. Yeah. Or you stay here. There's no pallet in the shop anymore. Oh, okay. Hi. Ow. Yeah, he's a good boy. Ow. So these things I got at the same time, but they've been wrapped in plastic and they're still soft. Hallelujah. So no picking up and dropping these four or five times. So I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll try to finish all this today. I don't know. About halfway there. We'll see how the first 30 bags go. <laughs> If I get far enough, I'll set the laser back up and I'll nail on a two by four right along here, right at the, the finished height of the concrete. And then I'll just pour the concrete right up to the top of that pressure treated two by four. So let's get mixing. It's getting light too, but I should have a few hours of sunlight left. Seven. Seven, so. Two and a half hours. Okay. Two to three. All right, let's see, see how far we can get. Oops, thanks for your help.
All right, good morning. I'm back inspecting my work from yesterday. And it's looking pretty nice. Let me show you the, the hole I have left to fill. I'm contemplating running to town right now. I got, I got the trailer full of recycles, full of cardboard mountain, basically. I can run up to town and pick up some concrete and, and then come back and mix it and throw it in here while it's still fresh, you know. And it should bond well if I was to get some right now. It looks like probably got about six bags. Maybe a little more. But I've got I've got one more bag. Yesterday I also threw in a bag of mortar. And uh, I have one more 80 pound bag of mortar. That's kind of older mortar, so I want to use it up, but I want to use it on the uh, brown coat or stucco coat. So I figure I'll mix that in with the six bags and get this done. It's five bags, well, a little under five bags. And to blend the edges, I've got some mortar. And I'm just gonna try dumping some powder and water on there and just kind of scraping it around and seeing if I can get it to blend. I think that blended pretty nice. So at some point, I just gotta tape all that, and then I'll build a couple of stairs, or a set of stairs, that make it easy to get up into this crawl space. I don't think I'm gonna trowel this anymore. I kind of, it's a little bit too dry now. I'd really have to work at it to get the cream up, so. This is gonna be it. So I got some cleanup to do again. All right, this mess is cleaned up. Then we got this mess. And then I've got this pile of stuff to find a home. I'm tired. Before I clean up this big mess, I'm pretty sure that was around 120 bags. It's basically two pallets. And that's what that looks like when you're done. I was going to count them, but I don't care that much. It was a lot. That's all. Hello, Steve. Yeah, he is. You want to go upstairs too?
walking circles. Is he making an oval? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. He, I think he's going around. It kind of looks like a caterpillar. Sorry. Yeah, caterpillars turn into butterflies, don't they?